And the next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on common agricultural policy convergence monies due for Scottish farming. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would urge members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now, and I call on Fergus Ewing. Signing off, sir. Once again, I find myself raising the matter of the common agricultural policy convergence monies with you here in this chamber. That is because Scottish farmers are still owed around £160 million sterling in common agricultural policy funding, uh, funding that the UK government has thus far failed to release or even acknowledge. Let me remind Parliament what this dispute with the UK government is all about. Under the current CAP, the UK will receive an extra £190 million pounds of funding over six years for direct payments due to a process known as external convergence. This process was put in place by the EU to redistribute payments more fairly across the EU. Europe said that all countries receiving less than 90% of the EU average payment rate per hectare would reduce the gap by a third by 2019. In addition, all member states are guaranteed to achieve at least 196 euros per hectare by 2019, which will benefit the Baltic states in particular. Now, the UK only received extra money, convergence money, under this process because of Scotland's very low payment rate per hectare, indeed one of the lowest in the EU at the time. Scotland's average per hectare rate at 130 uh, euros per hectare was only around 45% of the EU average, presiding officer, whilst every other country in the UK was above the EU's 90% threshold for triggering a convergence uplift. That means that the UK would not have received one penny extra in CAP funding had it not been for Scotland. Zero extra funding. And yet, the UK government of the time decided not to pass all the convergence money to Scotland where it was earned. In fact, we only received just over 16% of this extra money, that is around 30 million pounds. The UK government decided to divvy up the convergence money along with the rest of the CAP budget based on historic subsidy allocations. Now, I ask you, how can that be fair? It is not, presiding officer, what the EU intended. And it means that Scotland will have the lowest, the lowest per hectare payment rate of any country in the EU by 2019, as we are overtaken by the Baltic member states. The EU clearly intended this extra convergence money to go to those farmers who received the least. But this purpose was subverted by the UK government, who held on to the money simply because they had the power to do so. Now, I don't need to tell you, presiding officer, that wrongly holding on to someone else's property is well recognized in criminal law. In this case, the withholding of funds could be done simply because the UK as member state receives the money and has complete control about how it is allocated. So, you could say, presiding officer, this is the great rural robbery. But let me be clear. Let me be clear, I am not looking to Wales or Northern Ireland to stump up the cash. Our case is not, repeat not, against farmers in England, Wales or Northern Ireland. It is directed entirely at the UK government. They and they alone use the money for purposes for which it was not intended. Nor is our case anything to do with the impact of Brexit. It is entirely separate from Brexit. It relates to our claim against the UK government and not against the EU, our claim against the UK Treasury. And now it is for the UK Treasury to repatriate the monies that Scottish farmers are due. After all, presiding officer, if the Treasury in London can find £1,000 million to do a deal with the DUP, £160 million should be a drop in the ocean for them. It certainly isn't, though, a drop in the ocean for our farmers. 
In my view, it's essential to sort this out before any Brexit so that if any decisions on post-Brexit funding are based on previous allocations, Scotland's, benefit, Scotland's benefits from the correct figure, including the entire convergence funding. The fact that this, the UK government has so far failed to come up with the extra 160 million pounds is not due to a want of trying on our part. Both my predecessor and I have had numerous exchanges with UK ministers, both in writing and in person. Back in 2013, my predecessor, Richard Lockhead, garnered cross-party support, welcome support for the Scottish Government's calls for the full convergence uplift to come to Scotland. The issue was also raised with the Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, by our very own Alec Salmond. One concession, one concession we were promised by the then DEFRA Secretary of State, Owen Patterson, was a review of the UK allocation of CAP funds in 2016. But Brexit happened and that review never materialised. Since I took office, I've called for the promised review and raised the convergence issue with David Mundell, George Eustace and Andrea Leadsom. I raised the issue again at my very first meeting with Michael Gove at the Royal Highlands Show earlier this year. In fact, there have been so many exchanges with the UK government over the past four years about the convergence monies that, quite frankly, it's hard to keep count. However, despite past promises by George Eustace and Andrea Leadsom to review the UK allocation of CAP funding, nothing has happened. And, as I've said before, the review is important because it will highlight the vast discrepancies in payment rates per hectare north and south of the border. The review would, for example, highlight that DEFRA can afford to pay hill farmers in England around 65 euros per hectare, whereas we can only pay ours around 10 euros per hectare. Even taking into account the Upland Sheep Scheme, a coupled support scheme not used elsewhere in the UK, this only brings payments to our hill farmers up to around 35 euros per hectare. And although not directly comparable because the CAP is implemented differently in Wales and Northern Ireland, farmers there fare even better than England farmers, English farmers on average. I recently raised the issue again with Michael Gove at a multilateral meeting on 25th September. Uh, I can tell members that uh, Michael Gove agreed to a meeting to discuss the convergence issue, which I welcome. That meeting has now been arranged for the 6th of November, and I'm hopeful we can find a satisfactory resolution. Helpfully, our stakeholders have also been on the case. A joint letter signed by seven of our key stakeholders was sent to Michael Gove on the 11th of September. Presiding officer, it mirrors the Scottish Government's position on convergence. And although it was sent over a month ago, uh, I understand that they have still not had a reply. So, that is our case. I'm determined, presiding officer, to get a fairer deal for our farmers especially those most disadvantaged. It's a clear matter of principle. And it's not just about repatriation of the convergence funds that the EU plainly intended for our farmers, farmers who receive the lowest payment rates per hectare in the EU. It's also about setting a baseline for future agricultural funding. Unless the UK government acknowledges that Scottish farmers were poorly treated in this last CAP round, how can we rely on them to treat our farmers fairly in future? In conclusion, presiding officer, I'm grateful for the strong support that's been given to the government's position to date by members from across the chamber, and I trust I can rely on members, all members, continuing support on this matter. Thank you. Move to questions. Peter Chapman to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Peter Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I refer members to my register of interest regarding my farming business, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for a prior sight of his statement. Let me be clear. We in the Conservative benches are still supportive of the fact that this money should have come to Scotland. And I have personally raised the issue with David Mundell, Andrea Leadsom, George Eustace and Michael Gove over the last 18 months or so since coming to this chamber. Now, the Cabinet Secretary will perhaps be aware of the letter from Alistair Jack, MP for Dumfries and Galloway, dated two days ago, asking for a review of the convergence money issue and signed by all Scottish Conservative MPs. This was well received by Michael Gove, and I am now very hopeful 
of a successful outcome to this question. And I hope the Cabinet Secretary welcomes this. Now, this is a prime example of how more Scottish Conservative MPs are making a real difference. Yeah, yeah. What did yours do? Nothing. Absolutely a prime example of how we can make a difference. They are working hard and have had real clout in Westminster. However, a, however, a lot has happened in the last three and a half years since this debate on convergence, including Brexit. It is now far more important to look forward. We have a Cabinet Secretary obsessed with the past rather than look forward. Absolutely. He wants power over agriculture in Holyrood, but not the responsibility to make policy. And my question is, what is the Cabinet Secretary doing to chart a way forward and to design a system of support for Scottish agriculture post-Brexit? Brexit gives us a perfect opportunity to design a better system. When are we like to, likely to see what this looks like? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in order to be as generous as possible, I, I do think it's important to say that I do welcome the fact that the Conservatives plain, plainly recognise that this £160 million is due to Scotland. And that, that I welcome. I think, that, uh, I think that people watching this and not involved in the cut and thrust of politics will want to see this Parliament continue to exert pressure, which thus far has yielded uh, this apparent, incipient or expected commitment from Michael Gove, four years too late, mind, uh, but nonetheless, pressure from this parliament has apparently delivered a change of heart by Michael Gove, uh, and if so, that is welcome. But, you know, if somebody takes somebody else's money, that is wrong. That is what has happened here. Scottish hill farmers have been shortchanged to the tune of around £14,000 each. If you were a hill farmer, presiding officer, what would you have to say about that? Now, to answer the questions as I should, not that they're actually directly related to the topic, but, but, uh, but to answer the questions, of course we have set out a vision for Scotland's future of agriculture, providing high-quality food, continuing to steward the landscape and get the credit for that that perhaps they don't often get. Uh, but until such time as we have clarity that uh, the, the Brexiteers will implement the pre-EU referendum promise that the post-Brexit funding will be at least matched and that the around £500 million that Scotland has received yearly uh, from the EU will be continued, how can you work out a plan without knowing what your budget is? So please join with us to get those assurances that I've been seeking uh, since the day the referendum vote took place. Rhoda Grant to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for a prior sight of his statement? And can I reiterate Scottish Labour's backing for the Cabinet Secretary's bid to have those funds repatriated to Scotland? He's right in saying that this money was received by the UK to deal with the low average payment rate received by Scottish farmers. In a statement, he says that the EU want member states to guarantee at least an average payment of €196 Euros per hectare by 2019. The Cabinet Secretary is also aware that many hill farmers and crofters receive only a fraction of this amount despite farming in some of the most challenging areas of Scotland and many of them facing the additional costs of working on our islands. If he's successful, and I sincerely hope he will be, will he guarantee that this additional funding will go to those that need it most to deal with their relative disadvantage within Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. It, well, first of all, I would like to thank Rhoda Grant and uh, the Labour Party for their support. That's much appreciated. I mean, I do uh, genuinely think that the support that is exhibited here today will help me further exert pressure, which now does seem to have brought about uh, uh, a change of approach by Mr Gove. But it's not enough just to have a review, a report. That report, incidentally, must be an independent report and there must be an engagement between the two governments about who does it, what the remit is, and a quick timetable for res resolving something that has gone on, I think all of us would say, for far too long. But I do genuinely welcome the fact that there is support today. And I would also pay tribute 
to all the stakeholders who signed this letter, which I think played a significant part in gaining this uh, concession, albeit four years too late, that something must be done about this. Let me answer uh, Rhoda Grant's question head on. Of course, this money is intended for those who need it most in Scotland's rural communities, and therefore, to those rural communities, it surely must go. Uh, in terms of the fact that that money should have been coming to Scotland for the last several years, since the beginning of the seven-year period, it is money that should have been received in 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It's not just as easy as that to reconstruct what should have happened had the money not been, as I would see it, misappropriated by the UK Treasury. But I give Rhoda, my commit, Rhoda Grant my commitment. I will do my utmost to ensure that all or as much of that money as possible goes to our rural communities that need it most and for whom it was plainly intended by the EU. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by John Scott. Has the Cabinet Secretary seen the November edition of uh, Scottish Farming Leader? On page 9 it states, NFU Scotland has always been clear that Scottish policymakers must be empowered to utilise the future agricultural budget to develop policies and tools that are fitted to Scotland's unique agricultural characteristics. Uh, is the UK's long-run failure on convergence monies the irrefutable evidence of their total inability to promptly act in Scottish farmers' interests and illustrates perfectly why we must resist the Tories' attempted policy grab post-Brexit? Cameron Secretary. Um, well, there are several excellent uh, rhetorical questions there, and uh, I agree with, with all of them. I did actually see the article referred to, and let me just give one concrete example about why it is essential in practice for power over agriculture not to be grabbed from Scotland. If it wasn't for the fact that we've had a Scottish Parliament and a Scottish Government, and I give credit to the previous administration as well on this, then I think that we would easily have lost the ability to have a less favoured area scheme. Yeah. And I say that because my understanding is that other parts of the UK have dispensed with this scheme in England. They dispensed with it seven years ago. So if England was to set Scottish hill farming payments, would there have been any for the past seven years? I think not. And I think that's a very concrete illustration, uh, a practical illustration of the absolute need to avoid the power grab that we believe that some down in Westminster are intent on pursuing. John Scott to be followed by Kate Forbes. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I declare an interest as a Hill farmer? And can I agree with the Cabinet Secretary that external convergence funding should have been given to Scotland in 2013 and therefore welcome the suggestion in today's Telegraph that an inquiry into this matter may be undertaken by DEFRA. In the spirit of reciprocity, will the Cabinet Secretary now also consider holding an inquiry into the cost and governance of the failed Scottish CAP IT payment system as the sums of 160 million to 180 million are similar in both cases, yet the cost to the Scottish taxpayers through the IT and business change programme is in fact greater than the loss to Scottish farmers. Yeah. Uh, a political point, but not a question related to this direct subject Absolutely. itself. Absolutely. Oh, not related to this question itself. Kate Forbes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. What does the Cabinet Secretary think of the Tories claiming credit for first breaking a promise to review the convergence uplift funding and suggesting that all the money had been spent to my colleague Ian Blackford and then starting to crunch the gears into a U-turn? But in the midst of that noise and mess, will the Cabinet Secretary ask for an unequivocal guarantee from Michael Gove when they meet that the review will happen? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I will make my my third direct, simple, straightforward request to Mr Gove face to face, will you give Scotland the money due to Scotland back? I will ask him that for the third time. I, I think that uh, Kate Forbes makes an excellent point, uh, and it's a very nice point, because if I make a promise to you, presiding officer, four years ago, and I fail to implement it year after year, and then four years later, I make the same promise, 
and I expect you to fall down with gratitude. <laughs> Does that not display a, a certain kind of misperception of reality by the uh, government down in London? And I do have to say, and this is really for Mr. Gove's benefit, would it not be better that you respond to the democratically elected Scottish government uh, on what you're planning to do, rather than make your decision known through the organs of the Daily Telegraph, <laughs> no matter how esteemed that organ may be. Uh, it's a matter, surely, of respect and lack of respect that having raised this point again and again with Mr Gove directly, courteously, but very firmly, that this Parliament, that this Cabinet Secretary has not had the courtesy even of a phone call to indicate something that apparently is in the offing and is leaked by the Daily Telegraph. David Stewart, followed by John Mason. Yes, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Labour supports the Cabinet Secretary's attempts to repatriate the conversion funds from the Scrooge-like fingers of the UK Treasury. We all want a fair deal for our hard-pressed farmers. Does the Cabinet Secretary share my view that we need to get this deal sorted out immediately, otherwise we will not have a fair basis for future agricultural funding post-Brexit? And finally, has the UK Government breached EU audit requirements because of their behaviour on this issue? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, again, I, I welcome the support uh, from the Labour Party, and I, I do actually agree that successive UK Chancellors have resembled Scrooge. Uh, <coughs> Uh, not just the recent ones, but I'll move on swiftly, uh, swiftly uh, from that. Um, I think the fact that the money has been withheld for so many years causes additional difficulties about how we can safely disburse it uh, under the very exacting and demanding EU rules. In other words, the delay has not only been wrong in principle, but in practice may well cause significant difficulties in relation to our absolute desire to make sure this money goes to its intended recipients, albeit several years late. So I think he does raise a very good point, and it's one that I'm happy to look into uh, further and revert uh, to the House in due course, uh, no doubt. John Mason to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that uh, clearly the UK Government does have sufficient money to pay this £160 million because they managed to find £1 billion for Northern Ireland? Well, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a, absolutely correct. It's absolutely correct. And there's another point. So far as I'm aware, the £1 billion that was paid to Northern Ireland wasn't paid because there was any legal or moral obligation so to do. My understanding is that it was paid in order to secure the political support of the members of the DUP in the House of Commons. By contrast, this sum of money, 160 million, is, is money that was intended by the EU for Scotland and Scotland alone. And therefore, what Westminster have chosen to do is a grubby deal of 1,000 million pounds where they're under no legal obligation and ignore ignore, tear up, breach, misappropriate money which they were due to pay to um, uh, part of the UK. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Mark Ruskell. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of his statement? Although if his intent was to secure the support of Parliament behind the Government's position, I'm at a loss to understand why a motion isn't being put forward for debate and a vote in this chamber. Now, Scotland's uplands may be economically marginal, but they have the potential to deliver repopulated communities, regenerated habitats and landscapes, and even protect households from flooding. These are public goods which even Michael Gove has championed. So if the Cabinet Secretary is successful in delivering Scotland's fair share of the funding, will he commit to using it to deliver public goods which are now slipping off the table due to Scottish Government cuts to the SRDP budget? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, no, I don't accept that last point, the reductions to the SRDP. As Mr. Ruskell actually knows, because we met, uh, I agreed to the meeting. I met in my office with him, and we went over this. Uh, and as I understand it, subsequently he's acknowledged that because our budget has been reduced by, the we by Westminster, we have had to make consequential cuts and reductions. Uh, and, of course, we are nonetheless maintaining substantial payments to farmers and in respect of environmental matters uh, throughout the country. Uh, as far as a motion goes for debate, uh, let me be quite clear, presiding officer, if we need to have debate after debate after debate to get this money back for Scotland, so be it. We will bring these debates to Parliament and eventually we will succeed. Mike Rumbles, followed by Gail Ross. 
Um, does the Cabinet Secretary recognise that the real prize, the real prize in this process is to ensure that Scotland receives 16% of the UK's share of agricultural support in the future, rather than the 10% that might be used under the Barnett formula. Surely he recognises that with Brexit, he needs to build bridges and not use such inflammatory language which may be seen as undermining the 16% level of funding for the future. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, 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 from 18 years in this place, most of during, during which uh, Mr. Rumbles has been present with me, I, I can say that he is not unfamiliar with inflammatory language. Indeed. Um, Indeed. But, uh, but he does nonetheless make a serious point. And that serious point is that I have been arguing for uh, every day since the EU referendum vote, where Scotland, let's not forget, voted the entirely opposite direction to remain in the EU. I've been arguing every day that the UK must confirm that the promises made by the Brexiteers, including Andrea Leadsom, George Eustace and Michael Gove, during the EU referendum campaign, that all of the EU funding, £500 million a year, would be at least matched. Now, if I make a promise, I will do my best to deliver it. I'm calling them to do the same thing. They have not done that yet, uh, but perhaps uh, this exchange today may focus their minds further, and particular that of Mr. Gove. Keel Ross, to be followed by Edward Mountain. Thank you. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the time for reviews has passed, and that having been promised two reviews on this issue in the past, the UK government just need to get on with delivering the £160 million owed to Scottish farmers and crofters? Cabinet Secretary. I think I'd answer that in two parts. Yes, the money is due to Scotland. I mean, having been in this place for 18 years, I have not come across any case that has been more clear-cut than this. This money, quite simply, was due to Scottish farmers. Yep. There is no doubt even the Conservatives today have had the good grace to say that they recognise that is so, and I welcome that. So part one is, we don't need a review for this. Send the money to Mr Mackay. Mr Hammond, you've got the money. You paid far more to the Ulster Unionists we want our money back. Part two, however, and I think, uh, to be fair, Rhoda Grant and Dave Stewart have recognised this, is that for the future, it, we must recognise that the essential unfairness which was recognised by the EU in relation to the lowest rate per hectare being paid to Scottish farmers must be seen as part of any post-Brexit negotiations. And that's where the report, the review, must come in to look at the basis for a future deal reflecting the fact which caused the EU uh, to give £190 million intended for Scotland in the first place. Edward Mountain, to be followed by Emma Harper. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to refer members to my register of interest in that I'm a partner in a farming business. Let me say at the outset that I, my party and my colleagues in Westminster agree this convergent uplift should come to Scotland and we're actively working on that as the Cabinet Secretary has accepted and has been confirmed in the press today. I personally have met with Andrea Leddison and I've had two meetings with George Eustis, uh, Eustis sorry, to press Scotland's case in relation to the convergence uplift. Now, Cabinet Secretary. Cabinet Secretary, Cabinet Secretary, to save you raising your blood pressure, let me ask you a very simple question. The payment is due from 2014. Will the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the money should be paid direct to Scottish farmers without siphon or modulation and paid under Pillar 1 payments, not Pillar 2 payments, and not delayed by an incompetent computer system? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, no matter how frustrated and irritated I may have felt uh, privately about meeting Andrea Leadsom, uh, Michael Gove or George uh, Eustace, I think I've always managed to get their name right. <laughs> um, but seriously, though, uh, listen, listen, Mr Mountain, I put it to you very simply. If Mr Hammond wants to get on the phone to Mr Mackay this afternoon and say, look, uh, this money is due to Scotland, can I put the cheque in the post? Uh, uh, Mr Mackay says, uh, well, why don't you send it by backs? Uh, after that, if the money can go directly to the farmers, of course it must go to the farmers. 
of course it must go to the farmers that are due to it. If that happens, that is exactly what we will do, provided, of course, we are able to do that within the legal regime, because I've already alluded to the matters that David Stewart has quite properly raised and which no government can ignore. Emma Harper. Thank you. I remind Chamber I am PLO to the Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary has set out the sorry and tawdry history of betrayal of this funding. And would you agree that it's interesting that Mr Jack managed a press release deadline ahead of his statement, even though I wrote to all 13 Conservative MPs almost six weeks ago? And would you agree that we should also now be focusing on the future as well? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I would agree with both of those uh, uh, propositions. And I would just uh, perhaps turn the screw a little bit, uh, if, if, uh, if I may, by pointing out that the only precedent I can think of that remotely approaches this convergence money issue of £160 million due to Scottish farmers was the Scottish Bus Group Pensioners issue, where there was a deal reached between the UK government and the Scottish government. I didn't think it was a good enough deal, but there was a deal reached, so I must recognise that. It's the only precedent I can think of here uh, and therefore, uh, this money now due to Scotland must be paid. And if it is not paid, then it will simply taint any negotiations that further take place because there cannot be good faith in those negotiations unless the UK government delivers to Scotland money that is plainly due to Scottish hill farmers. <coughs> Thank you. And that concludes uh, our statement. Thank all members of the contributions. Point of order from Mr Scott. Um, thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I wish to raise a point of order and again declaring an interest. I can I ask you if it is appropriate for a Scottish Government Minister well acquainted with the use of legal terms to refer to the UK Government's action as robbery when the UK Government acted entirely within the relevant UK, EU and Scots law, notwithstanding the fact that I agree with the sentiments of the Cabinet Secretary's statement. Is this appropriate parliamentary language? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Scott. In this case, the, the Cabinet Secretary clearly had a strongly worded statement, but it was deemed parliamentary. We move on to the next item of business. We'll just take a few moments for members to change seats.